did that. Yeah. We're, we're back in open session. And we're back. So our first item tonight is uh, the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If uh, Reverend Elam will please pray for us and uh, Joe Cronin lead us in the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance. I'll invite my dad to come pray. That'll work out well. Let's bow our heads. Our Father, we pause tonight coming before you and um, we just want to take a moment to recognize President Bush's passing and lift up the Bush family at this time. And we thank you, Father, we have the example of great leaders that we can follow. And I appreciate the fact that we have honorable people who've stepped up and who've served and set the example for us. So I would ask tonight that you would help us to follow that example, that we would use the wisdom that you give us tonight to make the decisions that are best for the citizens of our county. We thank you for these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next uh, item is uh, call the roll. Call the roll. Councilmember Cronin. Here. Councilmember Brazel. Here. Councilman Elam. Here. Councilman Hammond. Here. Councilman Hollander. Here. Councilman Klinghammer. Here. Councilman White. Here. Thank you. Uh, next is public hearing on the 2019 proposed St. Charles County budget. Do we uh, have any speakers tonight? Anybody that want to speak on the uh, 2019 budget. Any conversation or any items from the county council? We'll go ahead and close the public hearing portion, and I will open up, open up public comments. Do we have anybody with tonight for public comments? Do you know? Yeah. Speaker cards. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anyone in the audience that's not a county employee? <laughs> we have one member. Uh, so I'll close public comment and uh, oral report for the county exec. Are there any? No, sir. Not, to, not this evening. Okay. Next item is the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Yes. I'd like to remove the uh, bid for um, emergency communication and then also the software and subscription support, um, those two bids. Um, that totals about $3.8 million. Um, I had some questions that I uh, started going over with Joanne, um, and I'd like to meet with the director on those prior to us approving those, uh, those two contracts. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Motion for approval of the remaining portion of the consent agenda. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can we pause for just a second before we go through Mr. Klinghammer's stuff and welcome our new county councilor, John Watson, uh, who's going to join us at the first of the year and say uh, we'll miss you to Keith Hazelwood, who's retiring officially uh, after the end of this year. We appreciate your service and we look forward to your service. Thank, thank you, Mr. Council Member. We'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have more to say about Keith later. <laughs> <laughs> the roasting will happen at the end of this meeting. <laughs> the 28th. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'd, I'd just like to hold those two over until the next meeting, unless there's other council members that would like to either have a work session on it or participate with me with a, a group meeting with the uh, with the director. Do you want to say anything about? I there just I had some questions on on what it exactly is, what we're doing with it, um, where the dollars really are coming from. So um, I just needs I just need a little more time rather to get further into it. 
Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's fine to, to hold it over. I just want to say that when I first saw it, I had some questions, too, and was asking to put it on next week. But then I was told that the number is actually way lower than we, than we uh, actually had anticipated. So I think when you look into it, you'll find some good news there, uh, as well as uh, whatever it is you're concerned about. I hope so. The, the only part that, that I guess my main concern is going out and extending the contract for that long without going out for, for uh, uh, bids and proposals from, from competing you know, companies. So um, that's the, the primary gist of, what, of where I'm going and uh, just like to get a little bit more comfortable on, on that aspect. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I had questions about the 911 dispatch eight years ago and, and, and software for that. And Don Bamer took me out to the 911 center in Wentzville and showed me all of that, how it worked. And then I didn't have those questions anymore. So if we do have the luxury of a little bit more time, I, I wouldn't mind seeing what this is going to do right at the EOC or the police department or anything like that, if that would work out for you, Joanne. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, we can do it as a meeting if um, three of you at a time want to come out so you can look at things. Otherwise, we could post it if that's what you would prefer. It is a working floor now um, for you to look at the CAD, so we'd have to be, yeah, oh, that's true, good point. John, for saying we could go to the training room that you saw right off the EOC floor, and you could see everything working there. Nope, Jeff said, nope, that's not the same. <laughs> well, it, is, it will be the same, it's not functional yet. It okay. will have to go on the dispatch floor. But that's Jeff, fine. what can we do? We, we can go on the dispatch do. floor. Oh, okay. they, yeah, they absolutely are welcome to come out on the dispatch floor. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and you need to be comfortable with it. It's a really important purchase for us. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a bit to learn there. That's why you got the long memos and um, the explanation. So uh, be happy to do that. Okay. Next, uh, we have uh, bills for introduction, bill number 4670. Would you please read? Bill number 4670, requested by Steve Ailman, sponsored by Council as a whole. An ordinance adopting and appropriating the fiscal year 2019 budget for St. Charles County, Missouri. Okay. Discussion. <clears throat> Mr. Cronin. All due respect to Bob and his team that worked real hard in this budget, and Joanne is in administration, is, and Steve in administration as well. I think it's important to take care of the folks that serve us in the county in law enforcement and patching the potholes in the highway department, inspecting our houses and, and doing all the other things that our county employees do. Um, I think taking, giving them uh, appropriate cost of livings uh, uh, increases to me is more important than hiring five more system engineers. And all due respect to Simon, Simon, I know the technology's changing and you need these folks, but I'm going to, I think it's a matter of priorities. For the, so for that reason, I'm going to ask that $485,000 be taken out of the IS budget and used to take the cost of living increase from 1% to a more realistic 2% for county employees. And then I would like the, um, uh, that $485,000 to be reinstated into, the, into uh, Simon's budget so he can hire his, uh, the, the, the number of employees that he requested in the budget at the time when sales tax numbers come in, hopefully positive, in March. So however you want to make that as an amendment, that's the intent of what I'd, I'd like to do, Mr. Chairman. I got a motion. Are you I making that as a motion? Oh, you are. Well, this is just discussion. Well, we can, we why can, don't you we can discuss it or we can motion it, however you want well, to. Why don't you, can't you like, give us some, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but mm -hmm. I don't think we're prepared to no, do that right we can, now. No. We can talk about it. We, I mean, we can talk about it. This is just, uh, you know, this is just the introduction. I think we, there's probably uh, a long way to go here before we actually, um, you know, get the nuts and bolts of what we're talking about as 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 was evident in our in our meeting there well i i i will say i i agree with with joe cronin and i believe there's a way to make this happen and uh if administration and finance want to figure out a way to make it happen 
versus us making that decision, I would highly recommend they do that because uh, I'm, I'm going to support that 4% uh, additional 1% cost of living. Yes, anybody else? <coughs> Mr. Snarr, if you'd like to come up and address us. So that we have proper guidance, <clears throat> and before we start running down a rabbit hole, I would, I would ask that there be a consensus um, arrived at by the council before we start looking at a budget adjustment, budget amendment. I, um, unfortunately, I don't think you're gonna get consensus until we see how we, we can accomplish it. I, I, um, well, I'm not prepared tonight to vote yes that we're going to, Agreed. Um, I think it's a it's a good exercise to look at. I, it's a noble goal. Um, I'm not saying that yes, we're going to do that though. Right. And uh, you very well may be spinning your wheels, but well, um, I'm not going to spin my wheels honestly unless the county executive asks me to do that. So really? I I would well, what I would ask is that you all come up with the the motion, noodle it amongst yourselves but I think it's incumbent on you to act on the county executive's recommended budget. So I think it's up to you guys to decide what you want to do and then communicate that to us. Okay? I think it would make a wise, be a wise decision think, that if whomever is going to make a motion that they put it before us ahead of time so the, the administration can tell us what the ramifications are of that motion rather than doing it up on the tape floor here right not knowing the facts. Like if Joe says what he just said, what's gonna be the, what's the ramifications of that, of that taking that 500,000 out of IS? That's what we need to know. We can't just willy nilly up here saying this looks good, it's a feel good motion, let's just give everyone a, a pay increase. We gotta know the facts. Mr. Chairman, yes. Bob and everybody in his office and everybody around this table will be available for the next two weeks to answer whatever questions you may have and to and to help you or the or the lawyers draft amendments if that's what you want to do uh but i think i think bob's only point is is uh we don't need to come to the next meeting with four different possibilities so uh um, well, i'm asking as chairman of the county council that y'all try and come up the way that we can give the employees a four percent raise yeah but i think what bob is saying is is there is there a way that four of you want to go on this Mr. Steve? Yeah. Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve, I'll, I'll, I'll be real specific. I think I try to be specific initially, okay? I'm saying delay the extra $485,000 to Simon until a time the sales tax revenue come in. And I'll give you an example of a question I have. One of the stated goals for next year for IS is the decommissioning of the Kansas City Data Center, but there's $120,000 in the, in the budget for communications with the Data Center. So maybe there's a way to squeeze that IS budget down, and while I, I agree that maybe he needs it, I think those the employees need to be taken care of is a greater need, I guess, is, and, and, and He's got asking for 1.3 million more, taking 485 out and delaying it till sales tax projections come in in, in March. And if they don't come in in March, then you know that's another story. But I mean, I want to be specific, Bob, because I know you want to know where to go. I want to know how you can delay 485 thousand dollars out of the IS budget to take care of the employees of this county. So I think that's probably specific enough. And again, Councilman, I understand if it was as easy as that, but once the raises are in and once the hires are in. The revenues have to sustain both things. Delay that, the hires until the revenue comes in. That's, I guess. The did we did we establish that you see say 485? I thought Bob said it was 1.2 something or something. Didn't you? No, no, one percent's 485. Yeah, one percent okay. of the general fund. Council okay, member. okay. I'm not in favor of this. So I'm I'm with Mr. White and Mr. Hollander. So. I don't think it's wise for us to go cut some of this stuff that's been vetted very well. If we want to give the raises, let's find out when the tax comes in. If we have the money there to give the extra 1%, then I'm on board. But I'm, I'm not on board on the way that we're trying to go about and do it right now. So I, I would say congratulations, Mr. Klinghammer. Um, 
we kind of just put you in the middle of, <laughs> of all this because I think three of us have been pretty clear and said we're good with the budget the way it is and don't want to take on the additional revenue because to Joanne's point, once you put that salary in place, that's the salary in place from this day forward. And you don't do it this year and then take it back from them next year because we had a meeting right before this that started off by saying we're short. And what we thought was coming in is not coming in the way we thought it was coming in. And then we want to say not only do we want to give that raise, we're willing to roll the dice on whether or not the tax revenue is going to come in the way that we think it's going to come in. And we've just been told that we don't think it's going to because last year on that $4 million number, it was subsidized by 960000 plus. So there's a real good chance we're going to end up short of the number that we originally thought we were going to hit. I think that's just being irresponsible with the county budget to put money out there when we don't know what that number is going to look like. And we were warned tonight that we don't know what that number is going to look like, but we were pretty well warned, be prepared for it to be short. Well, you know, I, I guess my problem is I don't know why they assumed uh, that they said they started off with a raise of 3%. I, I don't know why they didn't bother to ask us what would kind of raise would you like to see the employees get instead of just assuming that 3% uh, would be fine. Of course, most of us didn't know the cost of living was going to go up as high as it did this year, but uh, I, I would have I would have told them from the get go. It'd been nice to, if we could have figured in four percent. Mr. Chairman, yes. May I ask Mr. Elam a question? Yes, sir. The three that you mentioned, all three of you, though I, I assume, are still willing to look at this in March. Oh, certainly. And, By okay. all means. So what it comes down to, it sounds to me like that's the difference between making IS wait. For new people are making the the uh, um, employees wait, wait to see if they get three versus four. I just uh, want to make sure but the, point the is, revenue but, is there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And I guess the question is, what's the worst thing can happen if the employees <laughs> have to wait, versus what's the worst thing could happen if IS doesn't get what they need? Yeah. Mr. Crum. And then Mr. I'll Elam's words was a real chance this would happen if that happened. I can tell you some, one thing. There's a real chance we're going to start losing quality employees if we don't keep up cost of living increases. In the budget message, it says Missouri Director of Direct, Direct Revenue said the cost of living increase in Missouri is 2.1%. Would I want to hire into a company that pays half of what the normal cost of living increase is? If the cost of living increase is 2%, okay, and we only given our folks 1%, they're losing 1% a year. But we're and giving I, them three. Let me finish, please. Now, that the other part is merit. The merit is designed to be paid if you work hard and you, you, you're a good employee, you get a pat on the back, you get a merit. It's different than cost of living. So my, my, my point is this. If we're trying to retain quality people, especially in places like IS, I think we have to look at, at an organization that pays our employees fairly, and I don't think 1% cost of living is, that, is fair. Okay? Mr. Bradson. A uh, couple things. Um, if in f you guys said, Joanne, that you have a study, if in fact, I I'd like to know the facts, if, if the county employees are paid above the pay rates of county employees, I'd like to know that. I think that's important. And that, that determines whether or not a, a, a increase is uh, welcomed or deserved or whatever the right way to say it is. But also, um, I, I um, do think also that I'd like to know what the ramifications are if in fact we give the employees their increase and IS has to wait till March. I think we just need to know all this stuff. Um, you, that's just it, Joe. They might not. There's a good chance, and I agree with 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 Bob on this. I think that there's a very good chance that it's not just a matter of waiting till March and then suddenly we're going to hire these other people. I believe that that we're not going to see those tax revenues. Um, we got that extra payment last year that is not coming this year. Um, the trend has gone down. Hopefully, it'll bounce back up. For, for November and December, but we don't know that. Um, so saying, well, we're just gonna put it off and hopefully give it to them, that if that hope doesn't come out, then we're not funding our IS department. And Simon made a very good in presentation and, and, inf and gave us the information about why each one of those employees is necessary. Um, so as much as I'm trying to find a way to give the employees as big a raise as possible, I, I think it would be imprudent on our part and fiscally irresponsible to spend money for the employees that we don't have. 
is the impact of not not keeping up with our IS 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 pretty t pretty important also. Do I think there's other places that we could be looking? Yeah, I mean well, that's what I'm saying. We don't know. We're, he just said IS. It could be other. We don't. I mean, uh, right. someone's well, just on the floor is yeah. is a slash to IS. Well, well, I don't I don't IS has the largest number of but new employees percentage, and also in terms of budget. So I mean, I went to the IS. Not any any. Uh, Problems with Simon, but if you look in terms of percentages, IS has the greatest increase in personnel and operating costs of any other department in county government. Okay. So, yeah. are we, do we have a motion on the floor or not? Are we no, just, we don't have a motion. We okay. can talk about it. We got this as an introduction. I thought he made a motion, but obviously. Okay, that's all I want to know. But uh, I, you know, the county's in a is in a tough position right now. People keep buying online, not paying sales tax. This county relies on sales tax. That's, that's our only source of revenue. We get nothing from personal property. We get nothing from real estate tax. It doesn't come to the county government general fund. And uh, it's going to continue to be a problem. You know, uh, crime rates going up in the country, and it, I don't know what it is in St. Charles, but I don't think it's as good as we would like it to be, and I think we need additional police officers. It's come to a time that we need to look at other sources of revenue in order to maintain a police department that we're all proud of. So I don't know if we, I would ask that we start a, uh, looking at possibly a Proposition P to help fund the police department, because that's 70% that's of our budget, 60 or 70% of the budget. Dave, that, that I can get wholeheartedly behind with yeah, you on that. And, uh, Additional sources of revenue is, is what we need to be looking at. Okay. T two questions for Bob, I guess, in part of this discussion. One is the recent Supreme Court. No, you can, you can ask this later, Bob. I just want to let you know for now next meeting. The recent support Supreme Court case states that now the online retailers have to start charging sales tax. I buy something on Amazon, now I pay sales tax. Is that going in the use tax? Is that going in general sales tax? That's a question I guess we'll have to go down the road because, and the other thing is with the, with the St. Peter's Amazon distribution center, uh, we'll be generating extra sales tax from that. I, I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm just saying that's something you could give, send out to the council for next year, okay? For the next meeting rather, okay? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's my understanding that the state legislature has to act in order for us to receive any of that sales tax. So, well, we're paying it now. So, where's that money going? Because if you buy something on Amazon now, you're paying sales tax on it. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, Mr. Hammond, I, I suggested you uh, that, and I was partially right, partially wrong. Uh, that's absolutely right for everybody except Amazon, which is already voluntarily submitting, right, Bob? Right. So we're getting the Amazon, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of others that could be coming in depending upon what the legislature does or doesn't do. And it's no. not an easy question even there's with regard to Amazon because it depends on where they're sending it to you from. Yeah, you if it's that. coming from a fulfillment center, it seems to be that they're paying the tax. If it's coming from a fulfillment center outside the state through our use tax, so it's going to parks, if this is a fulfillment center, when it's open in St. Peter's and something shipped inside the state from there, it'll end up being a sales tax. But it's going to be a complicated situation. All right, thank so, you. I'm, I'm sorry, right now on items that are going to get shipped from that fulfillment center in St. Peter's, is only St. Peter's municipality getting the city side of the sales tax? Potentially. Wow. We're having a tough time getting a ruling about exactly, but that seems to be the belief of the Department of Revenue. What a windfall for Which St. Peter's. Which leads me to believe that the legislature will be looking at that. Well, St. Peter's should have paid for the roads that go into that center then and not <coughs> residents from St. Charles City. That's why we need bills 4671. <laughs> uh, any other... Uh, Comments on the budget at this point? Mm. Hearing none, let's move on to Bill 4671. Bill number 4671, requested by Steve Aylman, sponsored by county as a whole, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute agreements for advocacy and lobbying services. 
Any Here, time? Here's 150,000 right here we could take. More than 50. <laughs> 150, isn't it? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you want to take that and then we won't have anybody down there trying to get our sales tax for us? <laughs> Any other comments on Bill 4671? <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on to Bill 4672. Bill 4672, requested by Dave Todd, sponsored by Council as a whole. An ordinance amending Section 200.050 of the Ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, concerning fees. Any questions on this bill? Oh, we've had a snarky comment about every other one. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on to Bill uh, 4673. Bill number 4673, request, we, requested by Bob Schnur, sponsored by Dave Hammond. An ordinance amending the 2018 budget adopted as Ordinance 17-113 by making supplemental appropriations to the Regional Medical Examiner budget in the amount of $75,000 by transferring unencumbered appropriations between light items and the budget of the St. Charles County Sheriff. Do we have any questions or comments on that bill? Hearing none, we'll move on to Bill 4674. Bill number 4674, requested by Samantha Shadrack, sponsored by Council as a whole. An ordinance amending sections 115.320, and 115.722 of the Ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, all concerning the personnel administration plan, including but not limited to benefits. Any comments or questions on that bill? That would be our HR director. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to announcements or miscellaneous. Does anybody have any announcements? Uh, I do. There's some uh, flyers that are out. Of course, most of you probably already have these that are um, the SCCMO uh, Alert Me, which is um, something that's found online. Our communications department put this together. And it talks about uh, emergency management alerts, health alerts, police alerts, road construction and closure alerts that you can sign up for uh, on the website, correct? So you can go on the website and you can, um, it's a free mass notification system provided by the county for residents and businesses and it delivers alerts by text, email, or phone calls, so you can subscribe to receive those. So uh, congratulations and thank you to Communications Department for getting that together and everybody who was involved. I think that's really good uh, to keep our citizens informed of what's going on and uh, keep them safe as they can be. So well done. Yes, sir. Uh, John Greifus, um, I don't, Ryan's not here, so someone asked me, when is the uh, Daniel Boone Christmas lighting? Is it the next weekend? It's, yeah, this, uh, the storm will be the first weekend, and then there'll be the following weekend thereafter. We sold out on Sunday for Saturday night, and I think the second night sold out today. So it's, uh, the, so is that's, that's the first weekend it sold out? I think first weekend completely it's, sold it's out. This uh, week. It's this weekend. Oh, it will sell weekend. out both weekends. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, so if you didn't register, don't show up. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman, we have a member of our police department who's received a, a rather distinguished honor. And I'm going to let Joanne tell you about it because she was on the, the group that, <laughs> that voted to give it to him. <laughs> so actually, I am a most recent and civilian member of the group um, that awards the Medal of Valor throughout the region. The chief actually um, suggested them that they might want a little gender diversity on the board. <laughs> and so Lori Westfall and I and uh, another woman were appointed to that. But um, I should let the chief tell you. Um, but uh, so each year, officers who are involved in very life-threatening situations and who have acted admirably uh, and above, far above the call of duty, uh, names are placed in nomination. And a portion of those officers are reviewed by a subset of police only um, for the award of the Medal of Valor. And so because of the situation with the um, U.S. Marshal Fugitive Joint Violent Offender Task Force that the chief has asked you all to enter into and you agreed to, 
um, Detective Jones, who's dying of embarrassment in the back, <laughs> <laughs> and um, Detective Kevin Martin from St. Louis County uh, went on an early morning warrant service. Uh, I think it was the fifth one of the morning, as I remember. They had arrested numerous people before they got to this as they arrived here and got out of the car. This gentleman was fully armed and opened fire on them, retreating towards more weapons and more ammo. Sustained fire over and over. Um, Detective Jones took one in the chest, but to the admiration of the people who make the rifle plates, which he was wearing that day, he um, was bruised and not feeling real great, but he was not hurt significantly beyond that. Angry. He was very angry. <laughs> he was very angry. <laughs> and uh, the Medal of Valor Board awarded he and Detective Martin the Medal of Valor for their work that day. But I will tell you that far beyond the Medal of Valor that he got, what you need to know about the men and women of the police department, including our uniformed officer who's here, is they get out of the car every day knowing that that could happen to them. And these uh, officers who have decided to go into fugitive hunting uh, are going after people who are wanted, are already known to be violent criminals, and they get out of the car every day knowing that this could happen, multiple times a day. And they go anywhere the criminal is. So they are not just in nice neighborhoods when something is erupting or going to some place they are doing active investigation to find out where these people who are engaging in violent crimes are residing or working or hiding, and they are going after them. And that is the chief's initiative. And the officers who do it obviously have a lot of bravery in going out to do that every day. Well, we greatly appreciate their service, that's for sure. Absolutely. I would also mention that um, it is hour of code week this week, right, Scott? Yes, indeed. So um, I know we had a presentation about that, and um, there is an IT uh, career training expo that is coming up on Thursday, right, at the Job Center. So if anybody is interested in that, I saw that um, I believe our unemployment rate in the county of St. Charles in the last count is 1.9%, which is insane. Uh, I think we've all been told basically at 3% you're at full employment. So at 1.9%, I don't know how you don't have a job at this point. By the way, if you don't have a job at this point, uh, the Career Center can fix that for you tomorrow morning. I think they open around 8. So stop by. They'll actually run you through a full battery of testing to find out what you're best at. Uh, I was joking with somebody this past week that it, it used to be, I probably, I, I won't say that. So I started to say something and I went, no, I probably shouldn't say that here. But let's just say if you'll show up and work has kind of become the bar that a lot of employers are looking for these days because they can't get people who will just show up on a regular basis. But last count, I think we had over 3,000 jobs. At least. At least that we are currently looking for people in St. Charles County. and. Um, this uh, the minimum wage bill that we voted on uh, in November doesn't seem to be a factor in St. Charles County these days because demand is driving uh, revenue. And I saw the McDonald's by my house, I think, is offering 11 or $12 an hour to start at McDonald's. So um, the economy is going well in St. Charles County, but we could use people who want to work. Uh, so if you're looking at coding, it pays well to Mr. Cronin's point earlier. So that's a good <laughs> skill to learn, and uh, you can go learn it at the Job Center this week on Thursday. Yeah, and I think it's a great uh, job, great idea to get tested to see what you, you might be good at something you don't even know about. You could be a county councilman. <laughs> and, and, and then when you make all that money, make sure you spend it this Christmas in St. Charles County so we can take care of the folks that need to take care of us. There you go. Speaking of Christmas, if anybody wants to get more into the Christmas spirit, um, Christmas tradition celebration is happening on Main Street right now. Um, it is spectacular. Um, the uh, uh, crowds are, are there, but it kind of adds to the, uh, to the enjoyment of it. Um, Christmas carolers, the, 
chestnuts are literally roasting on an open fire down there as we speak. So, sugar plum fairy. Yeah. Sugar plum. Encourage everybody to go down there. We had a great parade in. Oh, Defiant Scott was led the parade. It was a great. We had a great turnout. We had 70 floats. There was thousands of people. I don't know how many people there. Were. It was a great time. It really was. And we the weather was spectacular. It was Chamber of Commerce Day on Saturday, and um, we had thousands who showed up for the. Uh, Santa Claus Dash uh, down here on the riverfront as well. So it was wow. it was a, a great weekend to be in St. Charles County and do fun stuff. With that, I would offer a motion to dismiss. Second. Second. One more. Oh, sorry, John. One more. Just want to wish uh, birthday wishes to Mary and come back on Friday, Steve. Yeah. Yes, 30 years. Well, happy birthday. Happy anniversary. So motion to dismiss. I got a motion to adjourn. I second. Yes. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.